So you asked for it and we made it. Today we're learning English with how to train your dragons. Now if you've never seen this movie, then be warned that this video will contain some light spoilers. And if you are new here, I want to let you know that every single week we make fun lessons just like this one so that you can understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like our fan Faustina, who says that with our videos, she can understand everything. And you will too, it's really simple. Hit that subscribe button and the bell down below and you won't miss a single one of our new lessons. My village, in a word, sturdy. And it's been here for seven generations, but every single building is new. We have fishing, hunting, and a charming view of the sunsets. The only problems are the pests. You see, most places have mice or mosquitoes. We have... Dragons. Most people would leave. Not us. We're Vikings. We have stubbornness issues. My name's Hiccup. Great name, I know, but it's not the worst. Parents believe a hideous name will frighten off gnomes and trolls. Like our charming Viking demeanor wouldn't do that. Morning! My village. In a word, sturdy. And it's been here for seven generations, but every single building is new. Notice how he uses the phrase, in a word. Before this line, he describes his village as cold, miserable, and hopeless. However, the one word that best describes it is sturdy. Check out this example with, in a word. Whoa, school light for me? Ah, uh, in a word? Awesome. If an object is sturdy, it is strong and not easily damaged. Whoa, so another stone is wrong. This is amazing. Amazing? What's so amazing about it? The stones are supposed to be stones, you know? Sturdy, reliable, true. He says his village is sturdy because despite the dragons constantly destroying everything, they refuse to leave. The opposite could be flimsy or fragile. We have fishing, hunting, and a charming view of the sunsets. The only problems are the pests. You can describe something that's pleasing or attractive as charming. We can all probably agree that a sunset, as seen in the picture, is indeed very charming. What's not so charming are pests. A pest is a small animal or insect that destroys crops or food supplies. Notice the discourse marker he uses to start this sentence. You see, most places have mice or mosquitoes. We have... Dragons. We say, you see, when explaining something to someone. Check out this example. Hey, look, I'm sorry, but this is all a big mistake. You see, I was in this yard sale. Yard sale? You see, most places have mice or mosquitoes. Mice is the plural form of mouse. You see, just like is the case with verbs, there are also irregular nouns. That is, nouns that do not form the plural by adding s or es at the end. Do you know or can you guess which of the following plurals is incorrect? Horses, sheeps, cows. Sheep is another regular noun, as both the singular and plural are sheep. In our Fluent with Friends course, we will teach you important grammar tips just like this one to help you avoid making mistakes. Of course, in addition to learning thousands of the words that we really use in our everyday speech, understanding how Americans really speak with correct pronunciation, and laughing along with all of the jokes. So you can try that absolutely free with our three-part masterclass. You can learn more and sign up again up here or down in the description below. Most people would leave, not us. We're Vikings, we have stubbornness issues. Stubbornness is the noun that comes from the adjective stubborn. If you're stubborn, you don't want to change your mind, even when it'd be reasonable to do so. I don't want to scare you, they can be a little inappropriate. And 
Loud. <laughs> Very loud. They're also stubborn. Notice how he uses the word issues. We often say this in phrases such as anger management issues, someone who gets angry really easily, or discipline issues. I told you to take them back and you kept them! Now look what they've done! Okay, granted, we do have some discipline issues. Eating kids is not a discipline issue. My name's Hiccup. Great name, I know, but it's not the worst. Parents believe a hideous name will frighten off gnomes and trolls. A hiccup is best described with a video like this. In the movie, Hiccup is the name of the main character. He describes his own name as hideous. This is an adjective that means extremely ugly. Uh, are these the best you have? Oh, it's all right, no one will see them. No, they'll ruin the whole look. Quick, quick, take them off. Yes, really quite hideous. Let's do something new for a change. Uh... Parents believe a hideous name will frighten off gnomes and trolls. Like our charming Viking demeanor wouldn't do that. If something is frightening, it makes you feel afraid or scared. As a verb, you can say to frighten, which means to make someone feel afraid or scared. <laughs> and he's scary and he's frightening and he's the death of all good things. Aw, you did a cutie pie. However, if you say frighten off, you make them go away by making them feel frightened. Example, people use scarecrows to frighten off birds. Gnomes and trolls are mythical creatures. Then he mentions the frightening nature of Viking demeanor. A person's demeanor is the way someone behaves, dresses, speaks, etc. that show what their character is like. Example, Messi has this quiet, reserved demeanor. But the ultimate prize is the dragon no one's ever seen. We call it the... Get down! <laughs> This thing never steals food, never shows itself, and never misses. No one has ever killed a Night Fury. That's why I'm gonna be the first. Mind the four pickup. They need me out there. Stay. Put. There. You know what I mean. When you describe something as ultimate, it is better, bigger, worse, or another superlative adjective than all other things or people of the same kind. Example, the Rolling Stones are the ultimate rock and roll band. Ooh la la! No, oh, no, don't get too close, boys. When it's completed, it'll be my ultimate weapon, but right now it's leaking radiation. This thing never steals food, never shows itself, and never misses. The verb miss has many meanings. You can miss a class or miss a person. If you're aiming at something, like Hiccup here, and you miss, you fail to hit that object. No one has ever killed a Night Fury. That's why I'm gonna be the first. Man the four Hiccup. They need me out there. This is an interesting case of using man as a verb. This could be said to be military jargon. That is, language usually used in this context. As seen in this Game of Thrones clip that we did a lesson on, to man a place means to put men there, especially to defend it or fight. We need to send ravens to the Night's Watch as well. There's no sense in manning the castles anymore. We make our stand here. Be sure to check out that lesson in the description if you're a Game of Thrones fan. A fort is a strong building or group of buildings used by soldiers or an army for defending an important place. Stay. Put. There. Stay put means to remain somewhere without moving or being moved. 
Get on. What? We're going to find him. Really? Everybody stay put. We will get Rough Nut back. Don't worry. Come on. Give me something to shoot at. Give me something to shoot at. There's a good deal of reduction happening in his sentence. Let's see. First, he merges give and me into gimme. Then, he doesn't fully pronounce something. He says something like, something. That's not it. He also connects that with the reduction of two. It sounds like, something-na, something-na. Finally, with shoot at, the T in shoot turns into an American T and connects to at, shoot at. Listen again at normal speed and then slow. Practice your English by repeating after hiccup. He hit the dragon, meaning the arrow or projectile he launched connected with the target. So as you saw, Hiccup manages to hit the Night Fury. However, his father and the people from his village don't believe it. Okay, but I hit a Night Fury. Oh, it's not like the last few times, Dad. I mean, I really actually hit it. You guys were busy, and I had a very clear shot. It went down just off Raven Point. Let's get a search party out there before Stop! I... Just... Stop. To make things worse, his father's disdain of him grows even more, as he's not strong and courageous like the other Vikings. When you carry this axe, you carry all of us with you. Which means you walk like us, you talk like us, you think like us. No more of this. You just gestured to all of me. Deal? This conversation is feeling very one-sided. Deal! However, eventually things start to turn in his favor. Is everything. Yes! I have brought down this mighty beast! No. Oh. I'm dead. <laughs> no, but you gave it your best shot. So, what do you think? Hey, look! It's <laughs> Turns out all we needed was a little more of this. You just gestured to all of me. Well, most of you. That bit's my handiwork. With a little hiccup flare thrown in. You think it'll do? I might make a few tweaks. <laughs> This is Burke. Oh, wow. I, I, I did it. 
Oh, I did it. This, this fixes everything. Having finally found the wounded dragon, Hiccup sees this as an opportunity to prove to his father and others that he's worthy of recognition. If something fixes a situation or a problem, it makes it better or makes that problem disappear. Okay, where are we going? To see my friends. The love experts? Love experts? Uh-huh. And don't worry, they'll be able to fix this. How do you know? Because I've seen them do it before. Yes! I have brought down this mighty beast! Oh. Oh. He quite literally brought the dragon down, meaning the dragon is not flying anymore because he wounded it. To bring down or to shoot down means to cause to fall by shooting. Then he describes the dragon as a mighty beast, which means very strong and powerful, or very big and impressive. And look, today, thanks to these amazing friends, my heart feels twice as big as it ever did. <laughs> Especially after what they risked for me, flouting the law and defying the mighty king of the sea. I'm gonna kill you, dragon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut out your heart and take it to my father. I'm a Viking. I am a Viking! Hiccup actually has second thoughts about killing the dragon, and eventually he befriends it, and the dragon helps him fight off the other dragons. Based on the clip you saw here, what do you think having second thoughts means? Feeling scared? Having a second idea? Doubting a decision? Because he shows compassion for the dragon, he later befriends it, meaning they become friends. In fact, in a magical turn of events, the whole village and the dragon start to coexist in peace. Hey, if you're enjoying this lesson with How to Train Your Dragon, then I bet you'll absolutely love learning with this recent one we made with the movie Frozen 2 from Disney. So if you want to check that out, then after you finish this lesson, just click up here or down in the description below. I knew it. I'm dead. <laughs> no, but you give it your best shot. Hiccup can't believe what he's seeing, so he thinks he's in some kind of paradise. That's why he says he's dead. His father says he gave it his best shot. This means that he tried his best. He gave it a full effort. Example, he's not the best English speaker, but he always gives it his best shot. So, he's referring to how Hiccup did very dangerous things, and it's a sort of miracle that he's still alive. I'd rather marry an aardvark. Good luck finding one that will say yes. Good luck getting out of here without a bruising. Give it your best shot. Turns out all we needed was a little one of this. You just gestured to all of me. Well, most of you. That bit's my handiwork. It turned out that Hiccup was quite a warrior after all. So much so that he even lost his foot in the battle with the big dragon. That's why Gobber says most of you as a joke meaning he's not completely whole now, he's missing a leg. Pointing at Hiccup's prosthetic leg, he says that's his handiwork. Handiwork means something that someone has made or done using their hands in a skillful way. I know this handiwork. Grimmel the Grizzly, famous back where I'm from. With a little Hiccup flare thrown in, you think it'll do? I might make a few tweaks. <laughs> then, flare is a way of doing things that is interesting and shows imagination. Dine with the best, dressed with a flair. Hiccup threw in some of his own flair to Gobber's handiwork. Then he says he might make a few extra tweaks, meaning slight changes. I'm just following the admissions criteria. Can't we just tweak them a bit? My village. In a word, sturdy. been here for seven generations, but every single building is new. We have fishing, hunting, and a charming view of the sunsets. The only problems are the pests. You see, most places have mice or mosquitoes. We have... Dragons. Most people would leave, not us. We're Vikings. We have stubbornness issues. 
My name's Hiccup. Great name, I know. But it's not the worst. Parents believe a hideous name will frighten off gnomes and trolls. Like our charming Viking demeanor wouldn't do that. The ultimate prize is the dragon no one's ever seen. We call it the... Get down! This thing never steals food, never shows itself, and... never misses. No one has ever killed a Night Fury. That's why I'm gonna be the first. Mind the four pickup. They need me out there. Stay put there. You know what I mean. Come on, give me something to shoot at. Give me something to shoot at. Okay, but I hit a Night Fury. Oh, uh, it's not like the last few times, Dad. I mean, I really actually hit it. You guys were busy, and I had a very clear shot. It went down just off Raven Point. Let's get a search party out there before Stop! I... Just... Stop. When you carry this axe, you carry all of us with you. Which means you walk like us, you talk like us, you think like us. No more of... this. You just gestured to all of me. Deal? This conversation is feeling very one-sided. Deal! This, this fixes everything! Yes! I have brought down this mighty beast! No. Oh. I'm dead. <laughs> no, but you gave it your best shot. So, what do you think? Hey, look! It's Turns out all we needed was a little more of this. You just gestured to all of me. Well, most of you. That bit's my handiwork. With a little hiccup flare thrown in, you think it'll do? 
I might make a few tweaks. Cats <laughs> are scaring me. What? What? What is? Was it always going to be this way? This is Burke. It snows nine months of the year and hails the other three. Any food that grows here is tough and tasteless. The people that grow here are even more so. The only upsides are the pets. While other places have ponies or parrots, we have Dragons. There's a thousand reasons I should go about my day and ignore your whispers, which I wish would go away. Oh, oh. you're not a voice. You're just a ringing in my ear. And if I heard you, which I don't.